Let's say you have a bunch of data points. Each one has a label represented by its color. Now you're given a new data point. What do you think its color should be? If you said red, you've given a very reasonable answer. And how did you arrive at this conclusion? Well, you can just look at the nearby points and tell which is the most common color. However, worded like this or approach seems a bit fuzzy because what exactly are nearby points? This time, the labels of the data points are different. They are not separated as clearly as before. It is likely that the dot with the yellow label is an outlier. But if we again check what label the closest dot has, we predict yellow, which in this case doesn't really seem sensible. Now, what could be the solution to avoid bad judgment due to outliers? We simply look at multiple close points, which should offer us a more representable sample of the surrounding points. The number of points we look at is called K, hence the name K nearest neighbors. Let us run this example again, this time with K3. Success! We correctly predicted red as the yellow dot is outvoted 2 to 1. Alright, let's look at a few more examples with different K values to see how the data point classification behaves differently. Did you notice how the same data point is labeled a bit differently in dependence to K? It's hard to spot changes like this in video files played one after another, making them poor candidates for visualizing how our whole space here is influenced by changes in K. It would be really neat if we could create some kind of graphic, right? Well, it's your lucky day, because based on your chosen K value, you can also plot the decision boundaries, which illustrate to which category a new data point would belong. Furthermore, decision boundaries may even help us to identify appropriate K values. Because as it turns out, setting K isn't actually that easy. Set it too low and you end up with a giant patchwork carpet. Set it too high and you ignore potentially interesting aisles of category A in category B. Or even worse, a too high K value may lead you to ignore all but the biggest category. This leads us to further questions and ideas like, should you choose an uneven or even K to avoid situations in which a new data point has equally many nearest neighbors from two or more categories? How should we resolve such a draw? There are a lot of approaches and heuristics on solving these problems, which honestly go a bit beyond the scope of this video. As you may have figured out, one of the biggest drawbacks of KNN is that it's really dependent on one factor. K, which you have to choose. Coincidentally, this leads us to a quick look at some of KNN's strengths and weaknesses. KNN is what you call a lazy learner, meaning that we do not have to train it, saving us training time, but costing us more time to run it, since we need to take a look at each already existing data point to find the one with the smallest difference to a new point. The opposite type of model would be an eager learner, which may take days or even longer to train, but runs fast in return. KNN is visually interpretable. However, as we have seen above, we must choose a suitable K value. And last but not least, KNN is very simple, which makes it easy to implement, but rather unsuited for more complicated tasks, such as image classification, as you cannot define what closeness for images means. Excursion. What we've looked at so far was the use of KNN as a classification tool. We had three classes shown by the color. However, you can also use it for regression, meaning that the result we want is not a class, but a real number, like a height, price, number of some object, etc. Let me give you an example. Imagine that this is the map of a city, with the points being plots of land. And while the plots have a different value, their general worth seems to be somewhat influenced by where they are situated in the city. If we were to designate a new plot of land and had to estimate its price, we could, for example, now go ahead and employ KNN to infer the price based on the nearest already existing plots. All right, this concludes the overview of KNN. Thank you very much for watching. If this video was helpful for you, you want to support us and accompany us on a further journey through the worlds of computer science and mathematics, we would be really happy if you gave us a like and subscribe to our channel. If you know someone whom this might interest or help, we would really appreciate you sharing our video. We are also keen on hearing your opinion. What did you like? 
What do you think could be improved? And which topics would you like to see in the future? Leave us a comment. Until then, take care.